Hey guys, Paul here, and this is another video update to Boy Destroyer 2. So you can see little guy is a little bit older. On um, one of the other update videos, you could see him just being held like right here. Uh, let's do for comparison. <laughs> it doesn't quite work. Still works, but a little different. Alright, so what's new in development? Well, for the past um, few weeks, I've been working on the sort of concept of being at war with another faction. So where we are in development right now is I've worked on early story missions uh, and mid-game mid story missions. At this point, the player um, has one base. At this point in the story, the player has one base. Um, and they're going to now be expanding to other bases. So before, what would happen is you would take another faction's base and they would get mad at you. You know, they wouldn't like that. They would be hostile towards you. Um, that was something, you know, that was like a, like a basic level of uh, sort of faction interaction, right? Hey, they didn't like you killing them. They didn't like you taking their base. They hate you now. They're going to attack you except they wouldn't um, attack your, they wouldn't deliberately attack you. They would attack you if, if you happen to be near them. You know, if like a military patrol was near one of your ships, or if you came close to, to their base, they would attack you, you know. But that was, that's, there's a difference between not liking somebody, hating somebody, and being at war with somebody. At war, you deliberately attack them, you try to take territory, you try to destroy their assets. Uh, so that's what I've been working on. So prior to this, you know, um, if you took another faction's base, they would be like, oh, okay, whatever, you know. You wouldn't really see anything come of that. Now, that faction will attack your bases, will try to blockade them, and if that base used to belong to them, they'll send over capture ships. So they'll try to recapture their territory. Um, so you can see bases trading places potentially and you you will have more of a serious incentive to fortify your bases make sure your defense is up uh, build defense platforms have proper fleets all of which uh, is made much easier by having a proper production chain by owning platforms which is one of the newer changes properly setting up your traders to have ore so that you can uh, build ships instead of buying them, things like that. So all these things sort of kind of meld together to create this sort of an empire type gameplay. So you start with a tiny little ship, you move on to a bigger ship, you get a fleet or, or a wing of ships, you get a fleet big enough to capture a base, and at that point you become sort of a faction yourself. And you were, you know, there's only so much territory here. And for you to get stronger, you need to take it from somebody else. So when does this at war state kick in? Well, there's two ways. Maybe I'll expand on this in the future, but right now there's two ways. Uh, the, the, the simplest state is when you capture another, another faction's base. So if you capture another faction's base, they are at war with you. That is like a declaration of war. So imagine um, one country invading another country and taking territory. I mean, that's like immediate, hey, we're at war. There's no question about it, right? So that sort of same concept carries over here. So if you capture another faction's base, you're at war. The other way of getting to the at war state is you have this sort of little bit of diplomacy here. And you can choose a faction and you can declare war on that faction. Now here I actually can't because we're friendly. Um, so that's one of the requirements. You can't, you can't declare war on a friend. Um, you have to be at least neutral. Um, that's one requirement. You also need at least uh, three bases to be able to declare war. Why is that? Well, because you're not really considered a faction unless you own three bases. Basically, uh, I want there to be a little bit of a 
period before you can actually declare war on, on somebody. So what I'm going to do, let's load up the load up a saved game. And here I am. It's actually pretty much the same game here, except now I'm neutral. Uh, it just so happened that my ships patrolling an asteroid field killed a bunch of pirates. My trading ships went to um, trade with the military, which raised my faction. So now that I'm just neutral, what I'm going to do is I'm going to override no trade because I don't want my trading ships to trade with these guys so they're not close by. And I'm going to say declare war. Declare war. So now we are at war. Um, I didn't have to capture a base, but we are at war. And I'll just kind of explain why this would be would be useful um, for a player to actively declare war. So now that we're at war, um, you can see the military here is red. That means they're hostile. Uh, we see their bases and, and their... That's actually a, probably another. Yeah, we see their bases are hostile. There's some other bases up here we haven't explored yet. And um, as we sort of wait, well, actually, already we can see here that we're getting attacked. Uh, one of our transport ships is getting attacked by the military. They've actually sent some gunships over. So already we're seeing this sort of at war effect. Let's just kind of wait a little longer. And there's a bit of randomness here, and there's a bit of this, this concept of, a, of a war power. So what war power is, is this sort of an internal counter that every faction has. Um, there we go. So we're getting one of our transport ships attacked. As you can see, it's kind of far away from their base, but they've still decided to attack it. So we, here we have a corvette with a bunch of fighters and possibly gunships that is targeting one of our transports. So we saw that right away. Um, so this idea of war power, basically um, every time they sort of do this attack, it costs them war power. And the way war power rises is um, the more bases you have, the more platforms a faction has, uh, the more asteroid fields they have, the, the higher their war power uh, increment, the higher their war power increases. So in this way, and now that this fleet has been created here, this costs them war power. We have actually a cruiser coming out of this military base. Um, but So the idea of this war power is that is that um, you can weaken a faction in a, in a very deliberate way, not just by taking their bases. Actually, yeah, if you take a base, that's going to limit their war power production. If you destroy their platform, that's going to limit their war power production. If you take out one of their uh, one of their fields from them owning it, that's going to limit their war power production. So the player can uh, affect another faction in this way. Uh, you know, For example, you might want to, as your first strike, you might want to take a bunch of their platforms, destroy them, uh, because that, they might not be as heavily guarded. Uh, and that will decrease their ability to generate war power, which means that uh, you're not going to be attacked as much or, or as by powerful forces. So um, every faction except the player generates war power. The player, you know, they, they build their ships, you build your ships, you fortify your bases, so you're, you're, you're the war power. You know, but for other pack factions, war power is sort of this number. So we have this incoming fleet here. Um, it's coming into our base, and it's probably gonna like really, really, really mess us up because <laughs> we declared war on the military. So um, it's not gonna be a good time. Um, this base is probably just just far too weak to to take this. We have some defense ships here. We have twenty nine defense ships. Uh, but this is this is a fleet of 57 ships, over 57 ships here, including a cruiser, which is gonna just just really 
really not be a good time. So, uh, so we're gonna see see what happens there. All right. So here's this fleet. We see our defense ships are launching. I actually might get pretty bad performance here. So let's see what happens. Here's my main ship. A little bit of a Apollo. Um, Apollo Corvette. I just hit time dilation so I can just see what's going on. And here we have a frigate, frigate. Here's the main ship, a palace cruiser. We also have we also have uh, victory destroyers. So this is a pretty sizable fleet. Uh, as you can see, there's quite a battle going on. Um, we do have some of our own frigates here. We do also have some defense platforms here. Actually, this is this platform. This platform is not even built yet. It's still being built. This one is built, uh, but it's partially damaged. So let's just see what happens. I'm pretty sure we're all going to die horribly here. But that actually illustrates a very important point that um, before this change, the player could, you know, take the military's base um, and sure they would hate you but they wouldn't actively go after you so it was far safer to attack the military now that, that, that we're at war and we have this fleet of uh, military ships coming in uh, the player's going to think twice about attacking the military so my goal is that the player is going to go after smaller targets first probably uh, Pirates, the, the miners union, bounty hunters, smaller factions like that, um, that might well might be strong, are not going to be as strong as the military. The player eventually is going to work up to the military uh, later on after they have they have enough ships. So we're not just really we're just really not participating in this battle, we're just kind of watching. Once their cruisers and destroyers get closer, we're just going to Save file before we uh, before this fleet arrived. So we're gonna watch this battle from from the overworld perspective while I just kind of keep yapping. Um, alrighty. So we see our defenders going after it. This is a huge fleet. They're just gonna get like wiped wiped clean there. Um, yeah. So yeah. So the goal is that you don't immediately attack the military. Um, so that that this type of situation doesn't happen so even the civilians you don't want to mess with really because the civilians have uh, a good number of uh, bases but they don't have cruisers you know so um civilians could be a target so you probably are going to want to attack pirates first especially because nobody likes pirates even other pirates don't like pirates so you, you're probably going to want to attack pirate bases first um then potentially the, the the miners, and then potentially the um, bounty hunters, civilians, and then potentially the, uh, the military. So another aspect of this uh, at war state 
is that um, if I, you know, once war is declared, things that used to be illegal are now legal, okay? That's kind of a grim outlook on war, but it's a bit of a commentary, I guess, if, if, you, if you want to think of it about that, that way. But basically, um, what I'm trying to say is when you're at war with a faction, fighting that faction doesn't ca cause a lowering of the faction score of other factions. So normally, um, with the civilians, if I was at war with the civilians, or if I wasn't at war with the civilians and I destroyed their ships, well, the military wouldn't like that. You know, they're the peacekeeping force. However, if I'm at war with the civilians and I destroy their ships, the military is like, oh, those guys are at war, so it's it's natural that they would fight each other, and your faction score won't drop. So declaring war um, is is sort of that sort of that aspect there, where um, that would be one reason why you would declare war is to keep your relations with other factions um, higher, right? So otherwise. If you start a war with the civilians, then the military is going to jump in, and then it's just going to be much, much harder. I want to make it possible to be uh, at war with the civilians. So here we have a blockade. This uh, this fleet is now blockading us. Um, so what's going to happen now is base capture ships are going to be sent in. Another aspect of a blockade is that now if I want to dock with this base, I'm going to save the game so in case I die, but if I want to block dock with this base, well first of all that, that blockading ship doesn't want to get at me. If you notice there's far less traffic now, there's like no um, civilian, indie, or other traffic here, bounty hunters, even even if I was friendly with them, are not going to come by this base. So this base is now like really isolated by this blockade. There's no trading ships to bring in energy or or, or whatever. So let's go ahead. Let's try to dock. You see my uh, shipyard platform is still there, but not for long. Going to go ahead and try to auto dock. Nope. While you're blockaded, you can't auto dock. Cannot, cannot do that. So let's try to just dock normally. If we make it. So even docking is going to be a challenge. Just got hit by a rail gun. That's why we're spinning there. We're basically. easy as they were before uh, whoops well, let's see let's see if I can run this blockade actually if I had some speed upgrades I might have been able to do it I'm just trying to use my afterburners as, as, as much as possible but you can't outrun a railgun round maybe I can like slightly oh there we go If I had some speed boosters, I could probably do it, but this ship, this ship, this particular ship doesn't. Alrighty, so let's keep watching what's going to happen next. Let's fly closer to this military, military base, just so we can see. hasn't launched any other ships yet. But the next step is is that it's going to launch uh, base capture ships. Here we go. We see some incoming ships here. So now that my um, base is blockaded, my morale is really, really low. Um, I do actually have some ships in the hangar. But that's all right. I see that we have incoming phalanx capture ships. Uh, so there's five of them. I'm gonna hit time dilation so I have time to talk. 
Uh, so even now, if these ships arrive here, they're very likely to, to capture my base. Plus, they'll just send more ships. Uh, my base is blockaded. So, and by this fleet, makes it really, really hard for me to defeat here in this particular case. But I can still go after these ships in space. Fortunately here, let's see, let's launch these ships. Send to main fleet. Let's see if they can run this blockade. There we go. Yeah, they'll be able to run the blockade because this this ship is going to focus on one ship here. Now that they're joining my fleet, I have a chance at taking out this ship. I'm going to order all my ships to attack this uh, phalanx. We should make it. There we go, there's my little fleet base blockade runner fleet. I told them all to attack the phalanx, so this should, should be a pretty easy job for them. So basically, even at war, even when blockaded, even when ships are incoming, the player still has a chance at, at sort of this guerrilla warfare. Um, so even taking on the military, you can kind of sort of you know, survive for a little bit. That was my goal. You know, So I deliberately don't give this base capture fleet like a huge amount of escorts, but just a few escorts so the player can't just like come in with a gunship or a fighter and just take them out. Um, so I think that's kind of the last bit there. I think that sort of gives the player more strategy. Alright, so we are at an earlier save. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look at our base before we declare war. So now I've built a comms platform here. Um, going to demonstrate our new uh, comms platforms. There we go. Alright, so this red line represents this incoming fleet. Now I can't see anything else near this base. I can only see this ship and that is because my comms platform, let's see if I can find it, pretty small but it's, it's, it's in there. My comms platform, when it's built near a fleet, I'm sorry, near a base, in a base, it's going to detect incoming fleets. So in this way, you can kind of give like sort of a bit of a heads up. Now when it's built in empty space, it's going to scan the surrounding area and tell you that uh, hostiles are coming in. So using comms platforms, you can kind of, you can kind of expand your, you can kind of expand your uh, sphere of influence, your detection grid. Uh, and I'm very happy about that. I'm very happy that comms platforms uh, have a use. Alrighty, so this fleet is right at our base here. I'm going to try to run the blockade. Demonstrate another aspect. Now, because I have all these ships here, I should be, I should be fine. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's use our ability here to greatly increase our speed. There we go. Alright, so another aspect that I've been working on is the ability to abandon base. Um, so if your base is blockaded and you know it's going to fall, you might as well just abandon it. Uh, that's one reason for it. I'll probably come up with other reasons to abandon the base. But I'm going to go ahead and toggle this, Let's say abandon base. When we abandon a base, our platform self-destruct because we don't want them to fall into enemy hands. All of our defense ships, our ships in the hangar, are coming with us. The base is now abandoned. Let's go ahead and let's try to run away from this. We got our speed booster, so we're, we're pretty good. And our other ships are sort of giving us some cover. There we go. So now we're going to enter overworld mode. And we see all of our ships are just kind of making a run for it. The base is abandoned. 
I'm going to order them to join my main fleet here. Um, so instead of losing a base, you could just abandon it. Basically, once you abandon a base, um, it's going to be nobody's. And then it's going to uh, revert back to the original faction after, after a bit of a time. So basically, it can also be used strategically. Let's say that you have enough power to uh, take a base but not enough power to keep it. Well, you can go in, you could uh, capture the base, you could then abandon it, which robs the other faction of the use of the base. You also can't use it, but nobody else can for a bit of time. Uh, so you could use it in a bit of strategic way. Um, I hope that players take advantage of that. Um, there might be a good, good story to go along with that. Of abandoning a base, um, you know, being desperate, having a huge fleet in there, and uh, you know, just just doing it that way. Plus, when it gets uh, recaptured by the enemy faction, um, you could probably easily capture it again potentially, because uh, it, it won't be, you know, won't have a massive fleet, won't have defense platforms and things like that. So the last thing I want to talk about is making peace so you can make war right what about peace um originally i wasn't going to include this uh, but i thought about it and i did include it because some players you know you want to have fights you want to have big battles but you don't want to necessarily destroy everything and just be <laughs> the only the only power in a game um some players are like that. Actually, I'm kind of a player like that too. Um, like, for example, playing some 4X games like Master of Orion, I would leave one one planet of a race. I wouldn't take that last planet uh, just because it kind of felt lonely to do it. So you have the ability to make peace now. So once you're at war, you can make peace now there's a bunch of requirements for making peace the other faction is not going to accept you making peace right now because you know they think they're more powerful than you so you have to destroy all of their platforms you have to take all of their fields and you have to blockade all of their bases so I hope you have a bit more diplomacy here uh, a bit more options a bit more of a feeling of an empire you know at this point in the game you can actually play it nearly entirely via overworld mode which i think is pretty cool how the game is able to change uh, from you being in a little fighter again getting a bigger ship getting a heavy fighter a gunship getting a little wing of fighters uh, then a fleet and capturing bases then becoming an actual faction building platforms detection networks uh, trade routes so to summarize there is now this at war concept um, it's sort of this 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 red line you cross or a, or a declaration you make during war you're going to get attacked uh, deliberately your bases are going to be blockaded your transport ships are going to be attacked your fields are going to be tried to be taken over uh, making the end game a little bit more interesting you know you're not just going to sit in your bases and just just sort of relax if you're at war with somebody you have to kind of focus on that you know um, you're not going to attack the military right away, hopefully. Um, and if you do, you're going to learn that it's kind of a bad choice. You're going to do it step by step by step. You can't just poach a base um, unless it's from a weaker faction. Um, so the progression is going to be there where you want to go step by step. You're not going to go right away at the military. Uh, although you could still capture their ships, you know, using, although it's hard, you could still do that. Um, you can make peace if you if you win and you don't want to destroy them you can abandon a base you know it's it's like this concept where you know this is my base right here but if nobody comes to try to take it from me if I can't lose it if I can't abandon it then it sort of weakens that idea of ownership you know if you can lose something if you can be taken away from you in a game then you own it you know, in real life, it's a little different, but in a game, if you can't lose something, it's just sort of there. You know, you own it. The, the developers tell you you own it, but it's 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 kind of kind of funny like that. So, 
Um, I hope you guys enjoy these changes. Um, they're probably going to need a lot of balancing, a lot of bug fixes. So please be sure to let me know about that. Um, there's so many other things I want to add here. I'm not even going to say them because I don't want to like make promises. But there's so many little changes that I wish I could do. Um, but we'll see about that. We'll see. We'll keep working on it. Um, next up are probably some more story missions. Hopefully after that I'll get to work on making carriers uh, a part of the game world, making them interesting and cool. And then we're going to work on some more end game story missions, then a bunch of polish, things like that, and hopefully somewhere around there we'll, we'll release. So thank you again guys for your amazing support. Hope you enjoy this update and I'll talk to you later.